Hello, I'm Neil Baker. I'm a dairy farmer from Somerset. Um, we farm about 3,000 acres along with our neighbours and some owned land. Um, currently milk about 1,800 dairy cows, mostly Holstein but with a fair bit of Jersey crossbreds and a few purebreds. Raise all our own replacements. So we have about um, 1,800 replacements today on the farm. So we're going to grow the herd a little bit. Um, make all our own forage. 60% um, maize silage, 40% um, grass silage. Grow most of our own wheat as well for the dairy cows. So we're trying to push towards 75% homegrown feed for the dairy herd. My name is Diana Gutain. I work at Rushywood Farm, joined 18 months as a dairy herd manager. I look after most things involving cows and staff. I improve fertility performance and cow yield performance. Business employs more than 40 people to look after cows um, and we are splitting them in different roles. There'll be people who milk, people who look after maternity and animal health, people who look after feeding and then a separate team who does all of the arable part of the business. We are growing all of our own forage stock on the ground with our own team, so we don't get anybody from outside to do that. The cows um, produce about 11,500 litres of milk, 4.2 fat, 3.6 protein. So relatively high components because we sell to Arla. Um, we've been selling to Arla since about 2015. Prior to that, we were making our own cheese on farm. So we've always had cows which have had quite high component levels in the milk. So that meant Arla was a good fit for us. Um, as a member of Arla, and I guess showing some kind of interest in the more environmental side of dairy farming, I got invited to be one of the Arla pilot regenerative farmers from across Europe. So we started that about a year ago. Um, so that's been an interesting development in my dairy career. I met Mark a number of years ago. He's always, as long as I know him, been representing UFAC as a company and he's been very helpful with some information I was after for different fat products um, and studies. And he's always kept in touch and latest last year he said there was a new product coming up on the market and he gave me access to some information. So I thought, what a fantastic opportunity to replace the alternative fat supplements that they were using and try Envirolac. I think because we um, have always made cheese here as a family, we've been making cheese since the 60s. I've always been quite close to our customers, that being the retailers as well as the consumers, quite customer focused. So when we stopped making cheese in 2012, I was very keen to have a milk buyer that we had some amount of control over. So that's why I wanted to join a cooperative. So I think that angle of always talking to the consumers, um, whether that's at shows or as part of publicity for the retailers, I think I've always known what consumers want and that is animal welfare, but now more and more it's um, concerns over the environment and you know you you have to accept that dairy farming potentially um, is vulnerable to those concerns personally I don't think that's true but you have to accept that that's what consumers think um, so we've been doing carbon footprinting for 10 years we always rank really highly on carbon footprinting um, so we know we're on the right track um, so part of that came out that a focus was more homegrown feed. So we started taking on more land around the area to grow more and more of our own feed because feed is um, a massive part of our business, both financial cost and carbon cost. So I think um, the general farming is now driving um, the cows. So the cows now get to eat what the farm grows, whereas previously the cows got to eat what the nutritious to me decided we would buy. So that's been a real big focus. 
So how is Enviralac different to all the other products on the market? So Enviralac is uh, home produced and we blend soft, very highly digestible oils onto dry carriers, um, maize corn cob, wheat seed, uh, etc. That we don't use any palm products whatsoever. It has a very much significantly lower carbon footprint. I think the carbon footprints of um, alternative palm products are around 2,850 grams, whereas Enviralac is about 1,120 grams, and that's a 64% reduction in product carbon. And if you transfer that down to the milk, 11% saving per litre of milk produced. As soon as Mark was able to, he shared the research what came out of Nottingham University. And it intrigued me because it was an alternative product for any palm-based product for the energy. Um, so it was very, very interesting. And we thought it would be a good opportunity to use it. And there was a big environmental benefit. UFAC approached us to, to do a trial for them. And they got funding from Innovate UK. They, they have the idea of replacing palm products with a palm-free product, mm -hmm. which was based on locally sourced vegetable and fish oil. And that meant that we could really reduce the carbon footprint of the, the product because the, the vegetable oils have about a third of the carbon footprint of the palm-based products. So you immediately save 64% of the, the carbon footprint of your your, your fat supplement and when we looked at the overall ration it was 11% lower carbon footprint just by changing the palm based product for Invarilac. Amazing. And when we did the trial we, we expected, well we, we hoped that they'd give equal performance uh, so we could then look at replacing palm on a, a like for like basis and what we actually found was that the, the cows fed on the Invarilac that she had a slightly higher performance. So the milk yield went up by 0.6 litres per day. And because they had higher fat and protein content, then we got 1.6 kilos extra energy collected milk per day. Of course. So it, it was really doing a, a good job. We are average just over 36 litres per cow per day at the moment and we are doing 4.2 butter fat, 3.5 protein even with the heat what we've had last few weeks. The inclusion rate at the moment is 250 grams of Envirolac, part of the ration across all the milking groups. And what proportions of grass forage to maize forage do you use? It's 2 to 1. Two to one. Salage to grass. And your protein source is predominantly rape? It's rape, rape meal. Rape yes, meal. Yes, that's our only main source, is, plus grass salage. Is that protected rape meal or just no, ordinary no. standard rape meal? Milking cows is just a normal okay. rape meal. Okay, and then 250 grams of Envirolac on top? Yes, just to balance the energy what we are short. And then no cake in the parlour either? No cake in the parlour. The herd is milked three times a day through 80 point rotary parlour. Milking cells split eight hours apart same order of the cow groups as they come through the parlour. At the beginning of our journey we were asking your confirmation and reassurance that we wouldn't lose butterfat yep. and a cow performance and you were 100% behind the product and you said that it's gonna maintain it if not help the performance of the yield and what we've seen since September last year, including it in a diet, that you were right, we didn't lose any butterfat. And in the last 12 months, if we compare with previous last 12 months, the average daily yield has actually gone up. So Envirolac is part of that ration. Excellent. It has been definitely playing part. We feel it's performing and it's supporting the energy requirements for the cows. It helps us balance ration. So there's definitely place for it.